Hi there. Uh, let's take a look at the Grobato Tomoto Toolkit, which you uh, can download from our site. This is going to show you how to set it up, and just know that you can pause this video anywhere. There are pretty extensive annotations that tell you what the steps are. It's all pretty straightforward, and it's uh, standard with uh, Moto scripts and config files. They simply be, need to be moved into the proper folders on your hard drive, and once they are, you'll be able to incorporate them into Moto's interface. Um, after they've been moved to the proper folders, you can go to the right panels here, click on the little plus sign, and create a new tab by going to Application and Form View. And that'll create a new empty tab, and we're going to stick our Roboto toolkit in there. Uh, in order to do that, we right-click on the Form View tab itself, right there where it says Form View. Go to Viewport Settings, and in this long list, look for Grobato Toolkit. There are a couple other Grobato things there, but Toolkit is the one that contains them all. That's the one you want. And uh, after you select that, there you have it. The uh, Toolkit is now ready to use right here in Moto. And everything is much handier now because you can make multiple settings at once and then apply the script, uh, much better than stepping through the old uh, primitive scripts we had. Now there's an alternate way <laughs> that we show here to create uh, the Grobato interface in a new window. It's, it's really kind of redundant. You don't really need to do this, especially since the tab views are detachable. But uh, since we went ahead and recorded it in the video, I will let this run through and show you. It's a, it's a very analogous thing. You're creating a new form view and setting the content of that form view to the Grobato toolkit. And uh, this is just another option. Uh, it's a floating palette, which means, if, especially for those of you with multiple screens, it might be handy. You can uh, put it off uh, to the side and uh, conserve workspace. Either way, as it says, it's entirely up to you, your preference. Uh, and remember that the tab view is detachable, so really the tab view is probably the way to go. So, uh, really quickly, let's talk about what these scripts do. Uh, there, the first one is used after you import the Grobato model, immediately afterwards, and it creates some useful selection sets, it uh, creates some weight maps, and it activates multi-resolution subdivision. All of this happens when you hit the apply button. And there's confirmation of the multi-res setup. And we also uh, create a comment tag for the mesh this tells you that the script has been applied and it allows us to prevent you from applying it twice since this initialization script should only be run uh, one time when you first bring the model in. Alright, and now the fun part. We're going to look at what you can do with the scripts that we have in the toolkit and uh, the data that they created. Uh, the import script created these two weight maps and uh, the other script that's included in the toolkit is the patch seam weight and slice script. Uh, that's a patch that you see outlined in orange there in Moto. Uh, the, that's what we'll look at first. The uh, weight and slice script is designed to make these uh, Grobato patches uh, far more flexible and editable. You've seen that in some of our previous videos. Of course it's all easier to use now with the uh, integrated interface items we have here and it has all been refined to give you better, uh, more predictable, and more consistent results. Uh, the point of this script, as you may have seen in some of the earlier videos, is to create a smooth transition between any patch or group of patches that you might select and the rest of the model, so that when you then begin to manipulate those patches with any of Moto's tools, you get a nice transitional effect as the seam rows the neat and tidy seam rows that surround the patch, uh, expand and contract in a nice smooth way to accommodate your edits. That's further enhanced by the option of slicing those seam rows, uh, adding additional seam rows so that you can really move and flex these things in a broad way. So that's what we're about to do here. I've set it to uh, two slices per row and there are three seam rows in this model so I've set rows to slice to three. Uh, I'm using the so-called sharp patch edge option and the weight profile is in the middle at uh, 
0 0.5 and when I apply it you see that uh, on one half of this seam, and the seam runs right down the ridge there, on one half of this seam we now have nine seam rows and on the other side we, we only have three and it's that inner part that I selected. And by the way, a, a part and a patch are the same thing. We call them patches in Grobato. They're called parts in Moto. Um, same thing. So now I'm going to move that around a bit and you will see the effect. So not only have we added those rows, but they've been assigned weights through a weight map. And because of that, they expand in a non-uniform way. And in this case, you can see they tend to hug the outer part of the seam, the seam of that patch, while the uh, inner edge towards the patch itself, towards the surface of the patch, uh, gets fewer points and has a more sudden turn. And that's why we call it the sharp option. It could be a little arbitrary because it depends on what kind of edit you're doing, whether, whether the end result should be called sharp or smooth. But uh, this is sort of the baseline that it's, uh, that it's uh, set on, and you get the idea. So here we'll get a nice close-up view. And you'll see as I pull that outward, there's that sharp turn right there at the seam where the patch joins the seam rows, and the gradual soft turn uh, as it moves towards the center line of the seam and joins the rest of the model. So I'm going to undo that and we'll go the other direction. We'll set it up for the round patch edge, and that's the only thing I've changed here. And now we go ahead and apply that script. And in this case, the, the division, the the new seam rows are exactly the same, it's just their weights in the weight map that has been altered. So if we go ahead and move that, you will see a very different effect, especially there uh, where the patch meets the seam, and there we get that nice rounded edge. Now of course it's going to flatten out as we start to stretch that, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying about uh, sharp and, and round uh, kind of being up for interpretation sometimes, but you see what the main effect there is that the rows stay closer to the patch than they do to the center line of the seam. And once all that is in place, well, there's really no end to what you can do, and it's, it, it truly is a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot of freedom here. Uh, the, the whole model is going to respond very nicely and stay cohesive and smooth and uh, and pleasing and uh, it just allows you a lot of freedom of exploration in your uh, design process. Alright, uh, I know all that was pretty quick um, but I will emphasize again that our other videos online cover that same patch editing process and the same is true of using the weight maps that I am about to uh, take a look at here. These are the weight maps that were created with the import script there are two of them. One is just the inverse of the other. Um, one causes the seams to stay stationary because they have a value of zero. The other one sets the values at the seams to one so they tend to move the most uh, when any kind of tool is applied. So there we go. You can see clearly that's the map that keeps the seams stationary as the rest of the surface flexes around those seams and here it's simply being applied globally to the entire model and it's, it's a fairly interesting effect. Now again this is just coarse basic stuff I'm showing you here this can really be controlled and used in very refined ways to subtly reshape uh, your model. Typically I will use these weight maps in combination with Moto's various built-in fall-off options that's a nice way to vary the effect and uh, speaking of combination of course you can combine the weight maps in, that came with the import script uh, together with those patch edge effects that are created by the other script uh, and that's what I'm about to do here. Now this is a, a, a simple sequential combination if you will. I've, I've used the weight maps to distort the model and now I'm going to use the patch tool just as we the patch seam weight tool just as we did before to uh, manipulate the patches but you can go beyond that you can actually use Moto's uh, math tool
to combine those masks the, or those weight maps uh, and get some very nice effects that way too. And all that is is a, a very rich world of possibilities that we will continue to explore in the coming weeks. But everything is here right now that you need to start working with this and uh, showing us what can be done with it. We're relatively new to Moto. Um, we're learning quickly, but we know that you have a, a lot of skill and uh, ideas and uh, methods and uh, techniques that we are certain can be combined with the uh, very useful and interesting setup and data that comes with uh, using our uh, special kits and the uh, structure of the Grobato mesh itself. So please uh, make sure to go online, uh, download the PDF that comes with this video. It uh, has all the information spelled out in the some detail and uh, have some fun. Thanks.